Okay, so I just wanted to quickly go over the schedule for tomorrow and a note about parallel sessions since we obviously had a little bit of a technical hiccup today. Um, so tomorrow will be our last day. Um, this is actually not to be determined anymore. This is from an old slide. So uh, we will start talking about links first thing tomorrow, like Julio said. It's an extension of um, a little bit of an extension of what we've been talking about here. Um, and then Priam will give us some examples of links in epithelial cells, cells, as well as talking about tissue folding phenomenon. Um, again, we'll have about 45 minutes of open hackathon discussion time now that teaming has kind of gotten underway and preparations for tomorrow. Um, we'll have another round of parallel sessions. Um, this time there will be four options. And we will, so we have to generate new links for these, obviously, since the links today didn't work. Um, I just realized I don't have my video turned on. Um, so we will, in the morning announcements tomorrow, we will have those links ready for you. Um, the two sessions, so session one and session two are both external guest presentations. We have Shane Hudson from Vanderbilt, looking at a computational model of secondary pallet fusion and disruption. This is a very interesting model and the code is huge. So it's it's interesting from the perspective of it being a very complex model that was written in older versions of CompuCell and has been updated to run in the new version. Um, so you get an up close look at kind of a gigantic CompuCell file tomorrow if you go to that session. And um, then we have Marin Moy Mukherjee who is looking at cluster size distribution of cells disseminating from a primary tumor. So if you have a hackathon project that's interested in cancer modeling, this one would be a good to talk to attend. Um, we have Giuliano Gianlupi, who is a group member of ours, who will be giving a presentation on how to upload your CompuCell simulations as ready to run NanoHub tools. So if you just want to send somebody to a link that will run your um, model basically in one click, um, that would be a good talk to go to if you'd like to start writing some CompuCell simulations and disseminating them as things that anybody can just click and watch um, and manipulate with the steering panels that James talked about today. And then Priam will also be giving another talk tomorrow on cell lineage tracing. Um, she'll also talk a little bit more about doing some scientific plotting in that talk as well, if that's something that you've been looking for. Um, and then just to get back to our fourth talk tomorrow will actually be Julio talking about planar cell polarity. Um, he can probably fill you in a little bit more when we turn it back over to him about the abstract for that. Um, so that's all I had. Again, keep an eye out on your email inboxes in the morning for the links that you'll need for these parallel sessions. And we'll make sure not to have the same problem we had today um, with those. And I think that's all I have. So I will turn things back over to Julia to continue answering some of these questions because I know people have a lot. So thank you all. If you don't have any questions, you're free to go and we will see you Barrett tomorrow. Barat has a question. Barat has a question. Yeah, no, I just say for those who don't have questions or who, you know, are not listening in on the questions, um, you're free to go for today. And ah, we'll see you okay. tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Can I ask? Okay, awesome. Uh, so, I was wondering that uh, I think this. I think Darshan pointed it out in the beginning that when you define the width, it goes in all the planes. So, if I'm like that, the cell is gonna be a, a square or or a cube. But if I have a three D model and have my cells on top of something, then um, I want it to I want it to be more spread on X and Y than my z because uh that's how generally uh in vitro cells behave uh even if i vary my uh, even if i vary my initial conditions uh i'm not able to achieve that as in if i vary my contact energy with my bottom substrate it's it stretches but um uh, my z kind of starts to um, chop off like cells become kind of weird in z if that makes sense can you can you tell me a way or some uh, help here which which can prevent that from happening? Uh, okay, so um, 
I guess in your particular case, your cell is behaving in a way that it's not give you a transition to the right in each condition. So probably there's something else going on. But I'll, I'll tell you another way that you can um, uh, write in each condition. So once you can use the uniform initializer and you can also use the blob initializer, okay? If you want to do something very specific, okay? If you basically want to draw the cell at specific uh, coordinate points, there is a way to do that from the Python level, okay? So uh, you can, let me just, uh, I'll be, let me just share my screen here to show to you very quickly how this is done. And I'm not sure that this had already been covered before, but I'll just use the, uh, the, the code that we were working before, okay? So here on the start function, for example, you want to draw a cell at specific co coordinate points, you can use the, the, actually it's better if I share my uh, desktop. Okay. Can you see my desktop now? Yeah. Okay, so if you go to, so I'm starting the start function because that's where usually when you want to set up your initial conditions. Right, so okay. If you go to 3D Python, cell attributes um no cell manipulation sorry there is a create cell option uh -huh. create cell detailed option okay so you can click that and then you can see that there is an option to actually draw a cell directly on the lattice great so you basically need those two comments here right um, right you first you create a cell object okay and then you just set the type of the cell. Uh, so it can be of type uh, ECM, for example. So yeah. I, this creates a cell object, but the cell does not exist in space. Okay. So and then on line 19, you can actually um, draw the cell. Uh, you, you can make a square of the cell. So right. you can make it at, I don't know. So it will be X, Y, and Z, of course. And what you can do here is you can do uh, at uh, coordinate, I don't know, X from 10 to... And, and this will allow me to change the shape to a rectangle or a cuboid, right? It won't yes, stay in yeah. the cube. Because then yeah. on the X can be from 10 to 20, right? Right. But and it can be Y different. can be from, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, 60 to uh, 63 right so between, right, and then and then and then very long on the on the x right and if of course this i'll just allow to draw a, a, a parallel okay i do not know the name of the object in, in english but i square in 3d that has different lengths okay yeah yeah got it uh, rectangle. Rectangle. rectangle now rectangle is 2d in 3d there's another name you boy you boy yeah, cuboid, exactly. Okay, uh, in Portuguese is very different. Uh, so yeah, you I got that. Do this for the cell, but if you don't want to do a cuboid, you want to do more complex, you can just make the skull. Uh, okay, it's, it's like in, Port in Portuguese, parallelepiped. Uh, uh, you 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 can um, maybe you want to do. like uh, another another layer on top that's a little bit thinner okay uh, okay yeah, so. uh, I can put this inside a for loop and then maybe make these position multiple of some numbers so that I can have many cells right yeah I believe so that's can... how I'm gonna create a layout yes yes okay okay the other thing you can do you can do a loop over uh, visit uh, our lattice Let, resource, yeah, yeah. Right? That makes and sense. Then you check some condition if it be, is within this and this these boundaries, or mm -hmm. is it within this distance from this uh, center of mass here. So you can use that to write actually draw a cell that's kind of circular, for example. Yeah, that makes sense. And 
So you, you can use that. Well, with this, you can draw whatever you want. Okay. Uh, this comment here does not be a range. It can be if you just do, for example, four, seven, and nine. You draw. Uh, you, you can write one pixel at a, at a time. Okay. So. So okay, you got what I, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. You Thanks can draw a lot. by hand. Okay. Yes. Yes. It, I can play around with that. That makes sense. It will take some time, okay? But once, once you, one thing that you can also do, you can use uh, PIF files, okay? Initial condition, Python, uh, pixel initial condition files format. To also, mm -hmm. once you write your initial condition, you don't have to do this again. You can start simulation by just calling a file that has the, all the... The values, the letters values. Value. Yes, the letters values. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Julia. No problem. What what I do in the for loop when I draw my cells, basically when you <clears throat> when you loop over all coordinates, you can uh, build any shape you like. Uh, if you can translate the shapes into mathematical uh, formulas, yeah. So you can build uh, paraboloids, uh, circles, spheres, uh, ellipsoids, everything using uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I will implement this. This should work. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, this is more of a logistic question. I've been traveling the last couple of days and I've been watching the recordings on YouTube, which are like 12 hours delayed. So I missed the hackathon uh, prep session today. Is there anything that I, I missed that was really important? Um, so we had a couple more lightning talks and then we were, we briefly looked at um, how teaming was going for people. Okay. Um, and we were just looking at the sheet to sort of update where the different teams are. So if you've had people join your, because you presented a project, right? Yeah, I think I have five people that joined. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if you want to go in, five is a pretty good number. We once you get about five, including yourself. Uh, five excluding myself. Okay. So uh, once one you get said, up to uh, one of them is like he's has a really weird time difference, so he's tentative. But okay. Yeah, once you get up to about six, that's about as big as a group can be before management gets untenable for a two-day project. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say if you want to go ahead and go into the shared document, just note next to the project title that you're not looking for group members anymore so people know okay. that the group is full. Just put group full next to, next to your title. Um, but yeah, we'll have some discussion time tomorrow if we want to talk about project scoping or planning or anything like that. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. So any other questions about anything Julia presented or course logistics or hackathon or scientific philosophy like yesterday, anything? <laughs> give people a couple minutes in case they stepped away or are furiously typing a question into the chat and anything like that. I know that's the worst when you've been like typing a question in the chat for a while and then the instructor starts to go like, well, if there's no more questions and you're like, oh. So <laughs> always feel free if we're, if we're about to move on and you're trying to finish a chat question, always feel free to unmute and just tell us to hold on a second so you can, you can finish typing before we you know, end the meeting. Um, just on what I was uh, put in the chat before, um, I do often get that the cell nucleus just disappears. Is the best way to handle that just to play around with your energy, um, your different energy terms? Just to try prevent that happening? Yeah, that would be one way to do it. Uh, 
do you want like to share your screen and show no. No. you uh, normally it? increasing lambda volume is the thing that you need to do okay because if the if the cell is compressed is is collapsing that means that the surface energy is large compared to the volume energy. so if you increase lambda volume that will balance it if you increase okay, lambda so volume too much the cell will stop moving but there should be a pretty good sweet spot of a factor of five or so over which the cell will move fine and it won't collapse. But, but why don't you show us that we could actually do that together? That's a good, that's a good learning experience, actually. Um, if you're willing yeah. to screen share it, we'd be happy to look. Yeah, sure can. Um, so it's this one here, if I just change, I'll put it back to what it was just to show you. Um, so it's initializing like this and then the nucleus just disappears pretty quickly. Um, oh, yep. Yeah, and easy. Yeah, I do find when adding in a value, oh, I'm not sure if that's actually even relevant anymore, um, but when adding in a value for this, it also tends to um, make the nucleus disappear. So yeah, there's just so, a lot of uh, ones to play around with. So, so the smaller the domain, the more likely it is to disappear. And the higher the okay. surface energy of the domain, the more likely it is to disappear. Um, but in general, the one thing that CompuCell might be should do that it doesn't is give you the typical energies for each of the terms in your plugins. Um, but you need so you need to balance those a bit by hand. But if a, if a domain disappears, yeah. then that almost certainly means lambda volume for that domain is too small. And you shouldn't yes. have to push okay. it up by a lot. Uh, you could try pushing it up by a factor of five. If it freezes, then you're too high. Uh, and so there should, but there should be a region of, of at least a couple of uh, factors of two uh, over which it's motile and it doesn't disappear. Yeah. Okay, sweet. I'll have a play around with that. If you are, are are you trying to to build a cell like in my videos? Um, which videos? Oh yeah, yeah, Pedro, yeah. Are you using forces? I am just starting to implement them, and I'm trying to see if I can manipulate the length to be in the direction that the um, Lamopodia are heading so that elongates in that direction. So you're using external potential? Yes. Okay, I, I don't use external potential. Okay. It's more interesting and the cell moves uh, faster as well. What do you use instead? I use an uh, internal field for lamellipodium. Okay. Uh, oh. Do you want to see? Yes, please. That would be amazing. Okay. So I will first first um, tell you the idea. Try to make you understand what's the idea behind it. So let's say you have um, two cells. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yep. Then you have, for example, one you will assign uh, the, the uh, back type and the other will be the front type. Okay. Yeah. So then you build a field uh, in a way that the field is always one in the front cell and zero otherwise. 
Okay. So you can do this, for example, with extremely high decay uh, outside. Also in the back, extremely high decay everywhere. Zero decay inside, okay? And then you make the cell, or, or you can, yes, and then you make the cell hold uh, the field at one, constant value one, secretion at constant value. And then okay. you apply chemotaxis with a, a negative uh, lambda parameter towards medium. So this cell will try to copy in those directions. So it is a more distributed force. You don't have, for example, this direction and then everything will try to go there. No, it has, uh, it's not, it, it's a self-polarizing cell in other words. Your, your polarization is not dictated by a force that you input in the simulation. Yeah, perfect. That's a, exactly what I wanted to capture. So in the in the videos, for example, actually my it's it's too cringe to show my my YouTube, but we always have to go through that. So don't be so, shy, just go ahead. Uh this one and this one. So all, all those videos, um it's the same mechanism. Okay. So this one, there's an external field here. This one as well. So th this is the most, look, you have the front, you have the back, and then they they move because of the field, because the field is one on the front, zero on the rest. Okay. So if you want to implement this, I certainly can help you. That would be really great. Thank you. Just wanted to make a quick note. I guess Max already left, but you know, when you're looking for the videos, the auto uploaded live streams that go up right after the sessions, you have to click on James's video page. There's a drop down area that, arrow that says uploads. You have to drop that down to either all videos or past live streams um, to see the auto uploaded live streams because the videos up, the edited versions are only counted as uploads. Um, YouTube hides that drop down well. Um, so I'll send out that link in the morning too about where to find the the auto posted videos. Probably worth also pointing out that that's not the same channel as the as the workshop channel. Right? That's James's channel. Right, but that's the James the workshop channel is, what... channel is a stream within my channel. Oh, I see. Okay. But if you no, have the link to so the workshop, it's you a playlist. That. The workshop is a playlist within my channel. I see. So all of the Compucell workshops current and past are there. All of the seminars related to CompuCell are there. Uh, so if you go up to my channel, you'll find all of the CompuCell material. Uh, but the, the link that I've given is for this workshop specifically. And once the workshop and hackathon are over, we will put the edited versions of all the videos together in its own dedicated playlist and send that out to everyone who attended so that you have easy access to the shorter versions of these um, moving forward. And by edited, we just mean that we're cutting out the dead air before and, and after each session. We're not cutting out any content. Any other questions? And I am trying to figure out a way um, 
to make cells move in a random fashion like the one I, I showed, but uh, with just one cell, not front and back, like one cell in one field. And then by the way that a uh, field distributes internally, you generate the force uh, with just one field and one cell. But I, I, I didn't manage to do to do it yet. Pro uh, that, that's why I was um, learning Tellurium because probably I would have to solve some some chemical reactions to produce the polarization in the field internally. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to approach this problem yet. Um, I'd be quite interested to work with you on that, Pedro. Uh, so if you have time now, we can. Ah, no, I, I actually, I, I have to keep with uh the, the the organization team for a while but we can i i send you a message in slack after and then we can meet uh in google meet for example and then i show yep. you how to do it awesome sounds good and I gave links to all of these other social media. I realize everything gets distributed, but we do have this Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter accounts, which people can use to communicate. Uh, the Slack may be uh, more effective, but uh, potentially you could find uh, community people to help uh, with these other ways too. Um, just wanted to get you guys' opinion as well. With adding a length constraint to that cell that I just showed you, I would like it to be in the direction that the cell is moving. Is that sort of an inherent property of the length constraint or is it quite a separate thing? I, I would really recommend using compartmental cells if you're going to do that, rather than the length constraint. Um, okay, so the one that I showed you, you mean adding like more compartments of the cytoplasm to that? Right, so because, because fundamentally, the moment you have a surface energy, things want to be round. Yeah, and if you if you try to stretch them, then you have something called a capillary instability. And that capillary instability means that the cell will tire start to break up into pieces if you pull on it too much. That's why you can't elongate the cell too much. Uh, yeah. In simulations that that did that, which we did, for example, with and there is an option in CompuCell which is connectivity constraint that you could turn on. There's a 2D fast connectivity constraint. There's a 3D connectivity constraint. So if you, yeah. if you, want, if you want to use the uh, logation with a large aspect ratio, then you have to turn on the connectivity constraint. That works, but it's slow. It'll slow the simulation yeah. down a lot. Um, I sent you a um, photo of um, one with the connectivity constraint on it. And it tends to be like a blob moving and then it just like, it forms like a long string and then it's right. just the blob moving. Yeah. That, that's yeah, the same capillary instability that you're going to get. Um, yeah. And so if you, if you use multiple subdomains, then that's what I think uh, Julio showed. Uh, you could string subdomains together to make arbitrarily long objects. And then each subdomain doesn't have such a big uh, difference in curvature between the top and the bottom side, the tops of the edges. And in that case, you don't have the energy problems that you have. And so, okay. so yeah. stringing things together as a chain of beads, uh, if you wanted to do something like, a, like a, as I say, a log bacterium, Filiform bacterium, uh, 
uh, that that's really the best way to do it. Okay. Um, well, and there's some that. tricks. I mean, AJ was asking, you know, could you make the, the compartments identical and then make them different? And yes, you could do that. You could you could have the cells addition. The comp you, you define 50 compartments. Initially, they have no energy between them that they mix. And then you gradually turn on phase separation. And that's more or less what Julio did in his kidney simulations. Initially, those cells, topical basal lateral surfaces are identical in properties. Then the cells are basically mesenchymal. Uh, there's a hidden set of compartments that aren't doing anything. Then you turn on differences in properties and you gradually polarize the cell. <laughs> so that's all. Okay. Um, I wish there were a simpler solution, but the problem with geometry is there's so many different kinds of geometry that people want to implement that there isn't a single universal way to do that. Yeah, that's all good. No, I'll definitely give that a go. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have a question. Is it possible to uh, to define, for example, uh, uh, I, I, an energy relative to torque between successive links. You so know that's I mean? supposed to be implemented in so I don't know if it's still there. There's a bending module. Yeah. I don't know whether it works. Okay, I, I never tried, but it is. Uh, it seems to be useful if you are trying, for example, to model invagination. Yes, it's very helpful. So if you want to check that, that would be great, creating a demo. Uh, if you could recreate Andreas Deutsch's old demo of the bacterial move, movement, uh, that would be ideal. If it doesn't and, work, we need to know it and fix it. And Liliana could try because Liliana is trying to do that, uh, that invagination simulation. She yeah. could try it. I could help her as well. But there, there, there is a bending modulus. It's a little tricky. Defining the bending modulus is actually reasonably complicated, the way to specify it. But but uh, I don't know that uh, if it's not there, it's easy to write the plugin to do it. So uh, we should make sure that that's there. Any other comments? People have stayed well past their, our official ending time, which is great. Lots of questions. Any other questions or comments for tonight? I did put all of the videos up on the YouTube channel in unedited form. So they may not look very pretty, but they're there. Okay, well, I'd, I'd like to thank everybody. Maybe our team could join me in my regular Zoom room for a minute, and we can uh, plan a little bit for tomorrow. Good night. Thanks, Al. Bye. Yep. See you all tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.